Solutions to climate change are projected to become the number one focus of new technology in the next 20 years. Companies who successfully solve this burning issue will reap major financial rewards on the road to becoming unicorn companies. Unicorn Hunters is not a financial advisor or broker. It showcases potential unicorns on its show, but we do not make any representations or guarantees about their future value. All investments have significant risks. If you choose to invest in a company presented on Unicorn Hunters, it will be between you and the company. Get ready, world, for a whole new way to invest. Introducing the Unicorn Hunters. We are talking about a cultural and economic shift. A savvy group of investors whose only job is to provide an unvarnished assessment of who they think can become the next unicorn. Still trying to come up with an idea of what actually your product is. Sex sells, my friend, sex sells. <laughs> what would you do with that extra $20 million? Meet the circle of money. Our unicorn hunters, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. I am in and I'm going to invest. Mo Vella, attorney, business consultant, and two-term White House senior advisor. Everyone has a place at the table. Sylvina Moschini, international entrepreneur and CEO of SheWorks. I believe in you and I'm going to invest. Lance Bass, boy band phenom, businessman, and venture fund investor. One word I love is disruptive and this is that. Scott Livingston, a securities expert known on Wall Street. Rosie Rios, financial wizard and former treasurer of the United States, with her signature on over $1.7 trillion of U.S. currency. This could be a game changer for a lot of families. Alex Konyanikin, a serial entrepreneur, author, and CEO of Transparent Business. I'm going to do this. Together with you, they're on the hunt for the next unicorn. Rayad Pazani is a global energy executive and former CEO of BP's global chemicals business with annual sales of $10 billion. His company SKH has far-reaching plans to harness the global excess of carbon dioxide using an innovative technology product known as mechanical trees. This groundbreaking and innovative approach has the potential to launch SKH to unicorn status as we continue to seek ways to mitigate climate change. Hello everyone, I'm Rayad Fazani, and I'm the executive director of SKH, a company that was founded to commercialize a technology called Mechanical Trees. Mechanical Trees has the potential to solve climate change. The Mechanical Tree can actually give us carbon dioxide at low cost and do it and produce a green CO2. We will use renewable energy to do that, and as a consequence, we will have a really competitive product. The Mechanical Trees technology was invented by Dr. Klaus Lackner, a renowned professor, a physicist, and the director of the Center for Negative Carbon Emissions at Arizona State University. Climate change is driven by carbon dioxide emissions in the atmosphere. This is an incredible opportunity. The world needs our contribution to solve this problem. What are mechanical trees? A mechanical tree is a drum. It is two and a half meters high and one and a half meters wide. And it has 150 discs sitting inside. Those discs are lifted up in the air, 10 meters high, and they separate. And as they separate, they allow the flow of air to come through. There is a material inside those discs that tracks the CO2, collects the CO2, and then the discs fall back into the drum, we put the lid on, and we inject a light steam, a low temperature source of heat that allows the CO2 to be released 
from that sorbent and collect it. We then dry it, compress it, and it's ready for use. Wow, yeah. great. Almost all carbon dioxide is made with hydrocarbon products. We're using hydrocarbons to make CO2 that we have too much of in the atmosphere. When you want to buy carbon dioxide today, you will pay between $300 a ton and $1,000 a ton. Mechanical Trees has the flexibility to put one tree for one customer that produces 80 kilograms. So if you're a small user, you can have one tree right at your site. You don't have to pay transportation costs. You don't have to get product to that location. It's there for you. And if you want to use a million tons, we can do that too, because we can build a carbon farm. That is how we're able to really compete by being able to deliver the right product to the customer and also doing it at a scale that makes sense. Now, who are the customers that we're going to be targeting? The first is the food and beverages sector. The second is agriculture. And then third, the industrial sector. So what do we need in terms of financial resources to make that happen? In 2019, we raised a round for $15 million, of which $11 million has already been committed, as well as a number of small investors ranging from $50,000 all the way to $400,000. Those investors have helped us get off the ground and build our first commercial unit, which we're right in the middle of. What we're planning to do is to offer $4 million of that round, what's left of it, on the same terms as those investors to you and anyone who wants to join our mission. We will also open a new round of $25 million which will be at a premium to this round that will be also available to all of you and the investors that want to join our mission. We believe this technology has the ultimate potential to solve climate change, and we would love for you to join us in our mission. Thank you. Great, thank you. Wow. Thank you, Riyadh. It was a very compelling presentation, and I celebrate the vision. I think it's, it's extraordinary. But I have many questions. One is a little bit more about the unit economics. What are the projected revenues that you have for, for the company? There are many companies that approached us already saying, can we buy a tree? When can we buy a tree? Now, there are great economics to be had, I'll give you a very simple example of that. A university buys a lot of CO2 today in gas canisters. They are paying, let's say, over $1,000 for that. They have committed to us to say, if you can make the CO2 at less than $1,000, we'll buy it. So that's the strategy we're following. So I want to make sure I've got this. Yes. Uh, I also, in 1995, had the privilege of working for Al Gore, but I don't remember everything, okay? So bear with me here. Yes. These mechanical trees, yes. they're going to capture CO2, is that correct? Yes, correct. And then you are repurposing that CO2 to become green CO2. Is yes. that an accurate statement? Yeah, I think the capture process and the sale process is part of the repurposing. I just wanted to be clear because I, yeah. you know, I, I can't always grasp these concepts. You've grasped it pretty well. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> and this whole process that we're, we're building, part of it is actually what goes on today, which is how you compress it and prepare it for market and meter it for the customer. And part of it is actually very different to what we do today because we have a tree at a certain location. You don't have to truck it, pipe it, put it in a storage tank, nothing. You can just take it from the source right into your application. Sure. Accessibility. Riyadh, now you capture CO2, a gas, yeah. and you hold it because your yeah. drum is tight, but it almost suggests, wouldn't you, what if you just took fossil fuel to pretty low cost and used debt to get your carbon dioxide the same way? 
first of all, it's a lot more processing, right? Because when you boil crude oil, for example, and I used to, used to run a business that does that, a refining business, you are not just producing CO2, you're producing all kinds of gases and fluids, and it needs to be done at very high temperatures to actually work. The reality is that, yes, you can burn any material to make CO2, but the way that we've conceptualized this is that we want to take CO2 out of the atmosphere. When you said 80 kilograms of CO2 per tree, is that per year or something? Per day. Per day I mean, per, per day. day. What percentage would a million trees be of the total CO2 that is emitted already? We think that we have to get to something like four, five million tons a day facilities to start making material difference to the balance of, of CO2. But have you been speaking to any of the buyers of CO2? Of course, yes. So I mentioned the beverages industry. We're speaking to a number of the major players there. In the automotive sector, we're talking to many, many, many of them. And they've approached us because they want the technology on their sites to reduce their carbon dioxide carbon. footprint and to use carbon dioxide from the air rather than from hydrocarbon sources. So I can see interest from the federal government on something like this. Sure. Are you pursuing government contracts? I would put them in the same category as other interested parties. Department of Defense, we've had some discussions with some of the uh, military folks because they actually, turns out, are always willing to try out new technologies for different uses. There's a lot of value in getting engaged with the National Centers for Technology and, and government sources to help accelerate what we're doing. Uh, Riyadh, you mentioned that you don't own the technology, that you license it. Yes. And that the licensing uh, fee is a significant part of the cost for this round which you're currently raising. Yeah. What are your licensing fees? Um, I need to check with our lawyers to make sure I'm not violating a confidentiality agreement. Uh, is it something which you disclosed in your private placement memorandum? Um, the budget will be. Okay. Riyad, first, I am a math and science guy. Uh, yes. This type of innovation is so up my alley. Uh, I've been lucky enough to chair the executive board of the Environmental Media Association for years, um, so I'm very educated uh, about this. But realistically, how many of these trees would we need in this world to combat the climate yeah. right now? Well, so one re actual natural tree, um, we need a thousand of those over their life to collect the same amount of CO2 as one mechanical tree. Okay, oh wow, that's nice. Okay, and then my other question is, uh, in making this product, what is your car carbon footprint on that? Yeah, so if we end up with um, uh, renewable energy as the source to power it, it's really very, very small. Okay. If we're using hydrocarbons, then it's not quite as energy intensive as a refinery or something like that, but probably somewhere in between. Okay. For us, we think that that carbon footprint, if we do exactly what we're saying we're gonna do, is gonna be insignificant in the scale of what we're generating. Yeah. So Rayon, yeah. for every one mechanical tree, yes. it replaces 1,000 natural trees. Over their whole life. Over the whole life. Yeah. Riyadh, I'd like to ask you about the ownership structure. You presented yourself as the executive director of your company. Are you also the founder? I'm not. Uh, we have um, three people who we would class as founders. They are the CEO of the company, a gentleman called Paul O'Moran, and a couple of individuals that worked in Arizona State University and had the foresight to say, this technology now needs to be commercialized and then sought the collection of people that we ended up putting together to actually make it happen. In terms of equity ownership, we have probably a group of six people who have started off with all of the, the shares in the company. And as investors came in, there's dilution. It's all subject to the valuation that we have in place and the deals we have in place. And it will continue that way. Okay, and what was the valuation of your $15 million round? We don't, we haven't actually publicized it. It was $55 million. 
you mentioned that the intellectual property belongs to doc, uh, Dr. Lackner, correct? Did he assign intellectual property to your company yes. in an exclusive basis? How, how does it work? Excellent question. Yes, Dr. Lackner and Arizona State University own the IP. They have licensed it to us on a very long-term basis. But essentially, it's exclusive. No one else gets to look at it. No one else gets to use it. And if they want to, they have to come and see us. Okay. Waz, you look uh, intently focused. What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking that there's still a lot of questions in my head. You're only in the middle of your first commercial unit. So how do you know, estimate how it finally turns out and operates? And do you count the environmental cost of the energy used to, to manufacture it sure. and run it? and how much energy equates to how much pollution, just like mining Bitcoin. So I have so many questions that I just don't have the answers to. Sure. Well, what we're trying to do is, you know, knock them down one by one. The first question is, does it work? And that's why we built the first yeah. commercial unit, because we've proved it in the lab and we've proved it five, five times over, but that's not enough. People want to see a full scale unit If it unit works at work. too great a cost, then the cost could have been applied more efficiently elsewhere to get greater carbon capture, perhaps. But we're consciously adding cost to this first tree because we want to measure everything that comes out of it. We want to understand every piece of how it's working. And so once we know how to work on it uh, in an optimized fashion, we can then stop using you know, all of that instrumentation and strip it down to its basic function and control its operating envelope so it doesn't have to... But you have to get to that point to decide if it's worthwhile and cost effective. Right, but that point is not that far away in terms of the first commercial scale unit. We're, we're talking about the back end of this year. We will know exactly how to operate this unit. Rayad, you're doing an incredible job and we're very grateful. But I think we need a little time amongst ourselves. Sure. Uh, if you don't mind stepping away from the circle of money, We'll have you back in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. A small company, you know, we just live and die by the capital that we have. Investment means the world. It's a vote of confidence. The whole panel was different skill sets, different ways of thinking. It just would be really a big boost to our team um, to add on to the institutions we already have and the individuals we already have. Right, circle of money, what do you think? There is nothing wrong in licensing and monetizing technology developed by others. So licensing wouldn't be a deal breaker, but we are trying to provide to viewers transparent access to select pre -PO opportunities, and transparency is the key word. I oversaw 4,000 of the best manufacturing employees out there making a global product used all around the world. I want to know if it's going to be made in America. One of the things that jumped out at me right in the beginning was that the guy ran a $10 billion line of business for a major international chemical company. That's something I'd like to learn a little bit more about, those experiences and how and why those are applicable to this opportunity because it is a big one. My concern is this is a very heavily saturated market and so I want to better understand what is his differentiator. And I'm interested in the B2C. Like I. I want one of these at my house. Does yeah. that benefit the world? Can can every household have this machine and people come by and collect you know, the yeah. CO2? Yeah. Um, that's where I think the impact would be best for the world. Well, there's multiple sides to this. Okay, it can grab some CO2 out of air, a certain amount. Right. But how much is used in the, the cost, A, of manufacturing? And what if it cost me a million dollars for my backyard? Cost of things is proportional to the energy used in from all the steps from mining things in a quarry on up to the final product. If you add together the energy, that is the cost of it. And the energy used is generally by today's general energy to pollution standards. You might be polluting more than you're exactly. collecting. And how do you analyze that? It, it, all right, it takes some Sometimes helping study. the planet hurts the planet <laughs> all right. at no, the same time. No, that can be, and that can be. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, that's actually the case. I think it's too early for, for me. Honestly, I do believe that this is a very saturated market. It is, as my friend and former boss Joe Biden once said, an existential crisis. It is the crises of our time, right? He is addressing the most pressing crises. Are there places in the world that have more carbon in the air? Are there regions that we need 
these in more than others? That's a great question. I mean, I know different countries mm -hmm. right. are contributing at different levels in a negative impact, right? Right, right, right. Think, uh, that, India, thus, the Paris Climate Accord, mm -hmm. right? But I don't know which ones are the worst culprits. How's that? Right. So I don't know about what you think, but I think we should bring Rayad back. Let's do it. Let's do it. Rayad, we are going to give you 60 seconds to uh, explain to us and everyone watching why we should invest in your company. Let's go. Mechanical Trees is an incredible opportunity to solve one of the world's toughest problems. We're totally focused and committed as a company to put all our energies in that technology that Professor Lackner gave us a great gift to humanity. All we need to do is stay focused on our execution, build the first mechanical scale tree, continue to build customers and interest in our company. We would love to have as many people join our mission to make a difference as possible. And I welcome you and I ask you and I invite you to join us. Thank you. Thank you, Riyadh. It's time to make a move. Mo, how do you feel? Riyadh, you know what? I'm really proud of all of your success in your career. Inshallah, SKH will reach its goal and objective. You know what? I'm going to invest. Thank you. Riyadh, I celebrate the cause. I think it's one of the most important and pressing issues that we have today. I'm extremely structured. I'm a control freak, so they say. And I don't see yet, with the information provided, all the data that I need to make a decision. So I will pass. Brad, I think there's a need for what you're making, and I really love this concept. But there are a couple of concerns that I have. One is your technology is licensed, so it's not really proprietary. So I'm hoping that you come back, provide some more information, that'll be posted on the website, and then our audience can make a decision for themselves. Because I think there's a lot of great information, but I think it's still forthcoming. Thank you. Rayad, I think you have an incredible opportunity, but chemistry is not my expertise. So I'm gonna do a little bit more research on the website, and I suggest those who are interested do the same. We'll look forward to following up. Thank you. Riyadh, uh, you have two main points. I have, for my whole life, been a friend of the environment um, in every way that I can, but if you put your money into one solution and there's another one that you could have solved a lot more carbon dioxide for the same amount of money, how many trees and how much space and what is the cost per tree and there's just too many questions I have still. So I've got to do some research on that end. And for now, I've got to pass. Thank you. Rayad, first, thank you so much for helping tackle this issue because it is so, so important. This is an incredible business. I am not ready to invest right now because I have several more questions that I hope you can answer for me and everyone watching at home, maybe on the website. Okay. Thank you. Riyadh. Your presentation will be watched by tens of thousands of investors. So it's not that important how many of us seven will invest. I, however, prefer to arrive to conclusions on my own. And some of the questions which I ask you, uh, you were not uh, really comfortable answering, like uh, licensing cost. And I believe that for a business model of a company which does not own but license a technology, it's a key question. So I hope that uh, you will clear it with your board and include that information in the private placement memorandum which will be posted on our website. In such case, I may at that point of time uh, came to a positive conclusion and invest myself. In the meantime, all other investors watching the show will be making the decision based on available information. I'll certainly follow up on the request. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Riyadh, for sharing this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Climate change is not a hope. Not a hope. No, it's real. There's no doubt. There are people sitting right now 
in every corner of the world. Coming up for new ways to capture, new ways to repurpose, new ways to resell, right? We're gonna have to have a lot of different solutions to the climate crisis, not just one. Today was wonderful. I had the opportunity to really tell the story. The mission of Mechanical Trees is to be the technology that delivers a solution to global climate change. This is something that we've been working on and passionate about, and we think the technology has the potential to do. Thank you, panel, for your decisions. We're just seven people, and this circle of money is not the final word. Wherever you are in the world, your investment has as much power as ours. You're part of the circle of money, too. And remember to connect with us on social and share this opportunity with your friends. And I want to thank you all for watching. And until we meet again, what are we? Unicorn Hunters! <laughs>